All right. So I said on Twitter that I would start streaming at 9.15. So we're a little early, but I just feel like getting started. So why not? Uh, probably the only person watching this anyway is Sam. So hi, Sam. Uh, so let's see. So yeah, what we're building is a um, is a Jai formatter within Jai. Jai is Jonathan Blow's uh, new programming language, and where we left off last time uh, was that we made a meta program that can f um, that finds the program that we want to format. So we have that defined up here in this file, um, and then. We tell the compiler to go compile this program, even though we don't really care uh, too much about its compilation, but we just want to uh, get its uh, abstract syntax tree so that we can uh, so that we can some, uh, do some formatting on that. Um, so uh, we got that. So whenever we uh, get this message from the compiler, so we basically take over control of the compiler. Uh, over here with this compiler begin, begin intercept and then we collect the uh, code declaration structs uh, in this uh, declarations uh, variable and then at some point we're done and we have found a number of uh, declarations and so to prove that this still works we can run uh, the Jai compiler and during compilation it will do this so uh, we don't even output a program here. We say that we don't have any uh, build output here, but we just use the, the compiler to, to get um, to get the abstract uh, syntax tree to get the declarations. Now, it's unclear if this will uh, really work for everything because um, it seems like we might not get any of these things. Like I, I was. Um, watching the Discord chat with, uh, uh, with the beta testers. And there was some suggestion that code doesn't even get compiled uh, if it is a polymorphic function. So we might have to, uh, uh, have to accept that we can't do this technique for polymorphic functions um, because you don't know. But yeah, you don't know what, what the polymorphic functions types and so on are going to be um, until you actually call it. So, yeah, this might not be perfect, but maybe uh, maybe we'll make it far enough, and uh, we'll see we'll see where, where we end up. So okay, so we have these declarations now. We see at this point we have forty one declarations collected here, um, and that sounds about right. Uh, if you would but let's look at the um, the actual program that is on the compilation here. Let's close everything else actually. Uh, so that would be the Minesweeper program that we made in an earlier stream. And so, yeah, there's a fair number, like there's a couple of functions. Um, within those functions, there's a fair number of for loops and so on. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that each each one of those is, uh, is one of those declarations. But um, yeah, let's actually find out what those declarations really are. So all those declarations are of this type, of this, uh, it's pointed to a code declaration. So. Where was this defined again? I forgot. Oh yeah, in compiler.ji. That makes sense. And so, oh yeah, that's right. A code declaration is uses a code scope entry and that uh, is a code node and that was defined in a different file altogether, but I think we'll actually need that. Oh yeah, that was in the preload. The preload is a module that I believe gets loaded automatically uh, for every uh, for every file that you compile. So in this preload, it says what kind of declaration it is. So yeah, it looks like everything um, is represented here. So loops, but also literals. So basically every, every part of the ASD is uh, represented here. So we won't need necessarily all of this. And then the file name is there. And this is one of the most important parts for us is the um, uh, uh, the line number, column number, and so on. So this is what we'll use to actually do our find and replace, I guess. So, um, yeah, maybe it would be a good idea to actually print out print out some information about these code declarations so we get some sense of what, what we get. Um, 
maybe printing out this type uh, would be a nice idea. Now, I don't know how you would resolve one of those names uh, back or like those numbers back to to a name here. But let's just try to uh, uh, they call it a kind. Let's just print out the, uh, the kind for each one of them. Just start exploring this stuff a little bit. So we can say for declaration in declarations, uh, we're going to do this thing and we're going to print out deco of kind. Oops, is this deco uh, dot kind? Uh, so let's run that. Okay, okay. So apparently, let's do it like this. Actually, apparently this does. Oh, so these are all declar. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> One of them is a declaration. But so what is a declaration exactly then? So let's have a look. So we know that these things. Um, okay, so these things have flags. They have. They don't have too much interesting stuff in here. At least not right here. Um, have an alignment expression. root expression okay so at some point we'll actually need to to find the code the source code for the code declaration anyway um, to sort of do a find and replace in the file so let's maybe do that now and we can print out yeah what what the actual code for these things are uh, and and just print that out and maybe that's more informative than this Okay, so how would we do that? So we basically need those things and we need to convert them into, into the strings from the, um, uh, from the original program. So I guess really the first thing that we need to do is uh, read your original program and oh, I don't know what happened uh, read your original program and split it into lines because these are by line and column. And then should be fairly straightforward to stitch them back together. So let's uh, let's start with that. So how would we read a file? Well, last time we saw that we had some file utilities, so we might be able to use that. So let's see, we have copy file, file list, some tests, uh, visit files, file exists, get full path. Hmm. So like a read file or something? No. Okay, yeah, we have something with a read file, file windows, file read. That seems pretty promising. Are there multiple implementations of this thing? Well, it seems to be what other places use. Yeah, there's a Linux implementation as well. Um, here's an example, actually. This is useful. What does this example do? Uh, I guess it has like a little piece of text and maybe it like saves it to a file and then reads from it, something like that, most likely. Okay, so at some point we have a file read um, and it reads an entire file into a buffer uh, because it, oh, there's also a file length. Okay, so I guess we can just kind of like use this routine. A um, little bit inconvenient that there's, like, would there be a function that you can call that will just return this buffer as part of the temporary buffer. Well, that might be a little too big for something like the temporary buffer, so you might want to explicitly allocate it. Okay, good, fine, let's, let's just try this. So, um, so we're at the end here, so we're going to say file length. Oh, no, file length is the name of the, uh, the function name. Um, what do we call it? What did we call it? Well, we just called it file. Or do we use it? Oh, we're gonna leave it there. Mm. Well, I don't even know if we, yeah, I guess we do need it a little bit. Um, can we just inline it? Oh, wait, where were we? Uh, yeah, we need it in multiple places. We could say file length bytes. Fine. So we do our file length. Uh, let's close this. We don't care about this. Yeah, and then we uh, we allocate our buffer. 
So, okay, we cast it to uh, a, a U8 array. Uh, yeah, U8 pointer. So we say file buffer. And then I guess we can call this read function. Yeah, sure, this is fine. We can have some, oops, a, a mistake here. We can have some, uh, some error handling. So in this case, we can say we cannot read from this file, and that's this is our file, I guess. In fact, I think this is the file name, really. That might be a better, uh, better way to call it. File name. Not any other. Yeah, so I guess here and here and here. Okay, so we read this into our buffer uh, for this length. Okay. So at this point, we should have a buffer that we can print out. So let's try that and run our program. File buffer. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, file length, we have to, of course, include, import a bunch of stuff. Oh, just file sense so in addition to file utilities let's sort this maybe uh, I can't do that here uh, okay whatever um, oh we need a file handle here so we passed in a file name because we need a to open the handle right so let's see we have file open yeah, so we don't need this for writing stuff. We just need a, a read-only file. Uh, so I guess we can do to solve this whole thing here. Uh, later, we do want to write to it if we're going to modify it in place, for example. But let's not worry about that for now. So we plug in our file name here. Ah, that's actually incorrect, I think, that it says for writing there, because that is what it said up here. Here it's for reading. Ah, so this is, uh, I should submit this as a little little documentation bug, I guess, in the, in the standard library. Okay, I think we can just reuse this success uh, variable. In fact, it's not being declared here, so it's actually it's assuming that it's already de declared up there, um, which I do believe we need to do this here then, not sure. Uh, oh yeah, of course we need to use the actual handle here. Okay, so we have a file buffer. Um, and this is this is just a yeah a pointer, so I guess we could cast this to a string. Is this going to work if I explicitly do it, do it like this? Will it? Uh, maybe it's like the first the first few elements in that buffer or something. Um, how could we interpret this as a string? I, I do believe that in the string library, uh, there's uh, yeah two string where it just. Uh, so yeah, it almost casts it. Yeah, creates a new string and it sets it sets the the count in the data field on the string because the string is a is a built in uh, sort of a built in struct. So we can try this because we do expect a uh, a buffer to be filled at this point. Oh, look at this. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff. That is great, though. It's even in the order that is it was written, largely, I think, or is there stuff missing? Uh, oh no, wait, this is the original file buffer. Okay, so yeah, now we have to actually split this into lines and look at the actual declarations. Right, so we were just looking at <laughs> the file itself. Um, great, so let's split this into lines. So I wonder if there's any sort of like split functions already. We could write it ourselves, of course, but that would be quite convenient. Let's search for the string split. Uh, oh, thanks, Sam. Uh, lots of hearts and stuff. Uh, let's see. Okay, so there's a split function here. 
Uh, where's that coming from though? So let's see where it's being defined. Uh, okay, it's in the string module. I'm sure this could be cleaner. <laughs> um, I'm sure it could be. All right, this will do though. So we pass it in a string, so we do need to keep that uh, to string part. So I guess we can just get rid of this and say, let's, uh, let's put it by new line. And this should give us our, our lines. And in fact, let's just print this out again. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, so we get, oops, what did I do there? We get, uh, uh, very informatively, it, it tells us that there's some, uh, some array of strings. Uh, so that's what we would expect. Um, yeah, so that should be fine. We don't need to debug that too much for now uh, or print it out. So let's look at uh, actually converting those code declarations into, into pieces of code that they are associated with now. So we can move down this, uh, this for loop again. And um, for each declaration we can look up. Uh, well, let's just maybe first print, what was it again? L1, L2, or L0, L1, L0, L1, yeah, and C0, C1. Okay, so let's just... Uh, Print L L zero for example just to uh, make sure that that's working. Okay, yeah. So we get a lot of different line numbers. Yeah, and look at this. They're not continuous, so I believe that they are being executed in the order that, uh, or like, and they're being emitted in the order that they're being compiled, and they're being compiled in the order that uh, calls are actually made to it. Uh, so that will be the problem with uh, polymorphic functions, but. Um, Let's try this. So we basically need to find, given an L, L0, L1, C0, C1, we need to, uh, and a list of lines, we need to extract a string. So um, we, there's probably no function for this, no helper. Uh, that seems quite unlikely. So let's do something like this. We can say like extract snippet, um, yeah, sure. And well, what do we want? We want an array, uh, then yeah, uh, of uh, strings. Um, wait, how, how does the syntax work again? Oh yeah. So this is our lines, and we want um, yeah. Let's call it extract snippet from node. I think this is called a node, right? Yeah, code node. Um, so we can have a pointer to a code node, because that is usually what is being passed around. Uh, is that, yeah, that seems, that seems fine. Otherwise we have to copy the entire code node, although that's not that much either. Um, yeah, maybe this code node is fine. Yeah, I mean, it could be a pointer as well. It doesn't, doesn't matter all that much. I have to have a pointer to it. Okay. So what we will need to do is we will need to use a string builder <laughs> uh, to piece back together these strings, right? So let's, I think that there's a string builder. I think we've used it before in the Minesweeper thing. Yeah, so it's a string builder thing uh, where you allocate it using uh, init string builder. Um, yeah, let's actually look at our Minesweeper program to see how that was done. I kind of forget the syntax. Oh yeah, so we just create a string builder uh, struct on the stack, and then we have to initialize it and defer uh, freeing it as well. Okay, so we can do that. And then we will have to iterate over our lines and add stuff to to, uh, to our string. Oh yeah, that's just an append function. Um, and we also have to import string builder, so let's do that as well. Let's start with that. We can, we can uh, import string builder. And we have to iterate over our lines, so yeah, we can have some loop uh, that 
um, if you remember, I believe that the syntax for this is something like this, uh, where line goes from code node uh, dot l zero dot dot, and then I believe it is inclusive, which yeah, it's a little bit weird, but actually in this case it will be exactly what we want. Uh, usually, usually you don't want that though. Um, okay, and let's just print the entire line. So let's just for now disregard the the characters for a second. We can deal with that in a in a minute. So then I think we say we append to the string builder uh, line line. Okay, and then we have to commit our string builder to a string. So where do we do that? Builder to string. And by default, it will use the context allocator. I guess we could use our temporary allocator in our case because we want to, um, yeah, this is sort of like temporary data. We don't want to worry about having to free it later. Um, so that would be, that would be wise, I guess. So I guess we can say return builder to string, string builder. And then uh, it is a little bit of a pain to do that. Isn't there a, fun, a, a version here that uses like the temporary buffer? Well, there's certainly other places where we use the temporary buffer allocator by default. So let's do that. Is this the right thing to do? That seems like a... Um, is this, no, I've seen this in other places. Oh, well, maybe it's only, maybe it's a somewhat new convention to do it this way. Uh, Let's have a quick look at where else we, because going into underscore underscore seems a little bit dangerous. Um, yeah, don't we just normally use this? Um, let's see. Uh, there's lots of places here. They use builder to string with underscore underscore temporary allocator here as well. Okay. I guess if that's the way. It feels like usually I wouldn't, or is it on the context nowadays as well? Could I use it? Does the context have. Um, mm, Oh, well, wait, the context should of course be defined in preload because we will need it everywhere. Here, context base. And um, yeah, temporary storage is being defined here, but what exactly is this? Uh, that doesn't seem exactly what we want. Okay, well, I'm seeing this in other places. Um, I don't really like the underscore underscore temporary allocator because uh, that's kind of like, feels like I'm doing something wrong here. But uh, if that's what, it, what it's gonna be, so we're returning a string. Yeah, so this should get freed. Okay, this should work. So let's print that. So this is, uh, this is this. We pass in the lines and we pass in the declaration. Uh, because the declaration it should cast to a code node because it's it's at the top of the struct. 
So let's see. Doesn't work. Oh, I have some sort of syntax error. Uh, did I not close close this? Okay, yeah. Um, oh, I did this the other way around. This is the syntax. Oh, I'm doing something wrong here. What? Oh, haha. <laughs> I keep forgetting this. This is how we declare a variable, and a function is just yet another variable. Procedure is missing its body. Oh, I must be doing something wrong again. It's <laughs> keep tripping up on. Oh, it's with an error. That's right. This is how we declare our return value. Um, it's not called string builder. It's called string builder here. What gives? Basic string builder? Should it just be in basic? No, I don't think so. What did we do in our... Oh, maybe. Okay, well. No, but we're... Oh, I guess. Okay, so we just don't need this. We just get it for free if we include basic. Oh dear. Oh no. Uh, possible overloads. Append string builder. Oh yeah, I need to pass in a pointer to the string builder. Not used to doing that. Uh, still not happy. Um, oh wait, that was the wrong line actually. But I think we also need a pointer here. So that's okay. All right, okay. Look at this. Um, that's not half bad. Uh, not exactly what, what I would expect though. It looks like I'm not actually getting the lines. Okay, let's, let's actually print the lines. Or is it just on that line? I mean, that's possible too, because I didn't previously look at, okay, let's just do L0, L1, and print this out. Yeah, okay, so it does look like they all just describe one line. So I guess this is, well, I still don't really understand what these things are. So these are a bunch of imports. This is where, I guess a variable is being declared here, sure. And here as well. Hmm. Well, this is also strange. Look at this. This is where L1 is minus one. What does that what does that mean? Huh. Well maybe we need to also get the the characters. Maybe that will give us some more, more information. But okay, this is a little bit surprising. There's also no documentation that says what exactly is a code declaration. So uh that is not too helpful. Um yeah, what are the characters? Let's just print out the columns. C0, C1. We can kind of like eyeball what they mean. So in this case, it's from position two, which is like here to eight. That doesn't seem right either. Okay, this is this is very strange. And it's all the same for all of them. I mean, maybe I'm not even indexing them. No, it should be zero index, right? Like that would be pretty weird otherwise. Uh, I mean, we get all these imports. L zero. Oh wait, I think there was a comment about this. Uh, Mm, the index of the ending line, C0 is the starting character, ending character plus one. Okay. Yeah.
Hmm. Well, let's look at the different ones. So here we have, well, this is weird again, right? C0 is one. Is that, uh, maybe that's just the start of the line then. Maybe they are one indexed, which doesn't seem right, but maybe that is what it is. Um, because I don't see any of these being zero, even being minus one though. Huh. Because this way it starts at random, which is the second declaration. It doesn't get the first one, and it does seem to get all the imports. Okay, so they appear to be <laughs> one indexed. Okay, so that means that everything is off um, by one. So I guess we'll do this. I guess here as well. It's still a little bit strange to me that, like, why are some of them minus one, but most of them seem to be the same? Okay. Anyway, you will need to do this to get anything, probably, so. This is still quite surprising to me. Okay, let me also print print out the file name just to be sure. I think we checked for this before. Yes, yeah, so this is all Minesweeper main.jai. And main.jai really does look like this, so that's fine. Um, okay, so we don't need that. That's a little bit cluttering. Hmm. So I guess here we have init string builder and it's like character 20 which to 21 maybe it's like that or something well, this is an empty line so that doesn't make any sense well this is all very confusing let's see because what would, are we even collecting these correctly? So this is a code declaration and uh, we do get, so this was one of these messages. I do believe that once we get one of these messages, we should know, uh, what, are, what are we doing, for compiling that? Um, we do really have an array of code declarations here. Oh wait. This is an array of pointers. Am I doing something wrong there? No, yeah, I go over each one of them. And check if it's the right file name and then check uh, and then add it to our array of declarations. Yeah, this really, <laughs> this really should be okay. Um, this is all quite surprising. Mm. And what are even these lines, right? Like the lines that have minus one there. So if that happens, let's just print those. Let's just print only those, actually. If code node of L1 equals minus one, then we'll, we'll just do this the way it looks. Uh, oh, wait. We also have to increment it here. Right, so, okay, that would make it a little bit better. Oops. Uh, so, okay, so here, I mean, this is a le legitimate declaration, it looks like, yeah, these as well. They're all one-liners. But then also this doesn't make sense. It starts at character one, but then there's no end. It's just a start for these ones surprising yeah I mean maybe this this whole approach is <laughs> maybe the stuff that we get from the compiler here well okay let's have a look because we do have a reference implementation we have our uh, print our program print let's see how they deal with um, uh, with code declaration things there so there if if we're printing a declaration we go to uh, 
what? Uh, okay. Uh, I guess, yeah, there's like a different definition of it. Oh, this is not too useful. Okay, here it is. Uh, okay, so there's a lot here. So if we have a declaration, what does this look like? Uh, builder using, is Marcus using? Okay, so there's like, if it's a procedure header, then don't do this. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it might just be the case that the, the line number and so on information is just not very well exposed for these declarations. That will be a good thing to report because this does not make it all that useful. Okay, well, let's go back, I guess, and um, can at least fix the bug that we had earlier and look at it again. Uh, this, because here we need it. Oh no, this should be okay. Uh, we didn't need a plus one there. Yeah. Okay, so let's maybe just have a look at what uh, what the structure of these things are. Maybe that's more useful. So in our code declaration, uh, we have our root expression, and that seems like a useful thing. The root expression on the right hand side of the declaration, and then it also has an alignment expression, which I'm not sure what that means. So let's do a search for that. That's not really being not really doesn't really appear in any code examples or stuff like that. Um, it should also have a name through virtue of uh, using code scope entry. Okay, sure. Let's print out the names of these things. That might also be useful. Let's see if that gives us any more information. Okay, so for a lot of them, they're empty. Um, okay, here there's actually something in it, but then this doesn't really say anything. Find people board. Okay. Um, am I doing something wrong though? Passing in. No, it should really be okay. Okay, let's try passing in the root expression see what kind of snippet we get from that. Oops. Crashed. Well, we did get some, and then it crashed. Okay, so maybe I am doing something wrong. Because <laughs> this doesn't look, this doesn't look, uh, look so right. So let's see, so. Uh, a declaration, oh, well, maybe we're just following a null pointer. That's certainly possible. Um, so declaration, yeah, this is a pointer, right? It points to a co another code node. It might be a null pointer. So I guess we can, we can check if it's a null pointer. Okay, this is a very long debug line at this point. Oh, I don't know if this was possible. Could we do ternaries? I don't remember. No. Uh, no such things as ternaries. Uh, okay, sure. Let's just uh, check right here. Let's 
So um, let's see. Hopefully it's not anything on the Windows computer. So okay, so we did get a couple of uh, null pointers. So let's have a look at this. So this is still not that useful. Wait, did, we did do the root expression there, yeah. Okay, at least we get like a struct here. Yeah, a lot of them don't have names, which seems strange as well. Okay, so at this point we have type check data, but so maybe it's just not very complete yet or something. What are the other stages again that we get information about the program? So you'd think that if it's type checked, that's that's quite a bit. Okay, so let's see. Any other build options that we're missing here? Any line directives? What does that mean? Oh, it doesn't say anything. Yeah, nothing that really. The LLVM we don't care about. Um, yeah, I mean, this does seem to be the place where in other places we do things. So here we do say, okay, when we get a declaration, when we print this out, um, let's maybe try to run this program print stuff and see if it does something meaningful for our program. Because it does look, look at this. Uh, oh, is there no, can we not really run this as, an, as a true example? Maybe it looks like not. Yeah, let's have another look. Yeah, this is still. Okay. Let's make our debugging a little bit more effective. So let's say print code node. We'll just do this whole thing there. code node here. Uh, if it's a null pointer, then we can say null code node. Uh, then we can say these things. I guess we can say here using code node. Then we can just remove this stuff. Here we just want to pass through the code node itself. Okay, so I guess what we can do for each declaration is we can print um, the declaration itself. And we can print the root node or the root expression. print because it's also the other expressions well let's just start with this just like this. okay uh, yeah okay 
Oh yeah, n name is not always there, right? So it's not in the code now necessarily. Uh, right, yeah, that's uh, not there. Oh, and we have to pass through lines as well. Okay, Dux. So, and then actually, let's give ourselves some space here. It's a little hard to follow. Okay, so we have a declaration here that has a root expression. Yes, this is weird. Okay, so here we have lines that do start with zero. Maybe they are zero indexed after all. Um, let's go back to that. It does make more sense for them to be zero indexed, but I still don't quite understand. Uh, oh, but in this case, they're all they're just all zero. That's just the root expression is not really a thing. Um, let's also print, I guess, the, the type of the, the kind of the thing, because we don't really know what this root expression is. Let's fix our indentation here. Okay, so here we should have a procedure body. Right, but it's like zero, zero, like this line information is just not there. Yeah, so maybe it's just, it's just kind of unreliable. Uh, I might just have to ask John about it and see if this is even, even the right direction to go because maybe, maybe this, this line information does, just does, doesn't make any sense, right? Because here we should have a struct <laughs> that we're referring to a line that is an import what okay so here we should have a procedure header uh, i really wonder okay let's look at that comment again the index of the starting line Probably don't want files that are that big. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm looking at it correctly. Okay, let's just for. I mean, maybe I'm not right. Like, let's let's just test all of our assumptions because assumption assumption is the mother of all fuck ups. Let's just uh, properly print our lines, right? Like, just to make sure, we can say uh, for line in actually let's make it an index it's called line index here for zero until uh, line stop count I believe minus one and we can print uh, we can print the line number and then the line I think that's that, that sounds nice so let's do line index and then lines line index Let's test our assumptions here. We probably don't need this anymore. Uh, ooh. I guess, uh, I guess that's not good. Wait. Okay, well that looks kind of what we expect. Yeah, so uh, here it's zero, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, I think this is looking good. We got our lines. I mean, this should match up exactly our program, right? Uh, here. Ooh, what did I do? There we go. Yeah, this looks great. So, okay, so that part is fine. I 
Let me wonder if I'm just making some sort of mistake here. Let's look again at the definition here. So we have a code declaration, which is using a scope entry, which is using a code node. So the real thing really is a code node. Um, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't use those pointers for that. Um, I guess we can iterate over each one's expression and print print that out to see if that is more meaningful. Let's do that. Uh, which is declaration of expressions. Uh, yeah, let's say oops, print expressions. Expression is an expression, should be a node as well, then our lines. Oh. Woo! All right, let's have a look at this. So here we have a procedure body. This procedure body has a lot of stuff in it. Identifiers, yeah, I mean, that seems pretty good. Yeah, I mean, really, you have to look at the columns here as well. Um, interesting, maybe this procedure body, like maybe this means that this thing is like the, the whole file. Like that's, that's a procedure. Um, yeah, no, it does seem like it's weird that it's all zeros, right? Like that means that it just says like there's, there's nothing, there's nothing there. Like no lines associated with this. And here it just gives me the first line and like literally just the first character in that line, right? So that's, that seems like very weird as well. Cause there's not even anything in there, right? Like this is indented even. Oh no, no, it's like, it's uh, character 20, so. But still, um, or maybe it refers to like this character. This is saying like, this is what it is. And so it's only always one character. Okay, well, let's look at the different one. And this looks like a big one. So again, here we have a procedure body. Yeah, so in there, there's a lot of stuff. What is online? Yeah, if we look at like line 22 here, just to see it in context. Line 22. No, wait, line 22 should be this. Like, am I printing the wrong, the wrong line? Yeah, this is line 22. That's, oh, wait, so it is one index. Yeah, okay. God. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do that anyway. Uh, wait. Oh, shit, I did it the wrong way around the other time. Oh, damn it. Okay, so it's one index, so we have to subtract one. <laughs> okay, okay, that is the mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, this. Okay, here an array bound check field. Okay, sure, so we have to check. Yeah, if we have zero, then apparently there's just nothing there, right? So we can say uh, if code node dot l zero equals zero. It's kind of funny that they have both zero and minus one, so that's kind of like an inconsistency. Send uh, nothing here. Uh, we still crash, maybe on L1. Ah, still. Uh, 
No, this really should be okay, right? Am I missing something here? Three. <laughs> I mean, these lines, these lines are correct. Um, the next is minus one. Limit is okay. Right here. Okay. One of five. Here. So I'm checking here. Oh shit. Okay. Okay, this is looking better. Yeah, look at this. This is the actual declaration. Ah, uh, I was just being stupid. Going in the wrong direction. Okay, it is kind of funny that the procedure body just doesn't have any anything associated with it. And it looks like, yeah, the declaration itself refers to just a character. One of these characters. That's kind of weird. Uh, it would be nice to somehow get like, yeah, what the full range of the function body actually is because um, we want to do stuff with that. But, you know, we can we can deal with that later. We can first worry about, I don't know, like indenting for loops or something or making sure that semicolons are, that there's no spacing in between them or something silly like that would be a nice, a nice start to get going with our formatter. Um, yeah, so this looks a lot better. Yeah, like lots of binary operators in here. Uh, let's look at the, yeah, so this is the other declaration. Okay, so we actually have our functions. Um, and let's look at a few more. These are all of our functions, I believe. Um, so let's do some tests with this. Oh, wait, and this is also... Okay, so the imports are also being seen as declarations. And it's, uh, it just has a root expression of using. So I guess what that is sort of what that means. We want to uh, use, so like we want to destructure the, the exports in our, in our file. It's not equivalent to C, C preprocessor style inlining, I believe. Very explicitly not so. Um, a couple of null root expressions here. No, wait, I think I made a mistake there. I don't have to do this anymore. It would be kind of interesting to, s whoops, to see what's, what is going on there. I guess we can, yeah, I think we deal with null pointers in the printer now. Uh, yeah, let's see where are our nulls. Yeah, it is funny. There's a bunch of things that just don't have, it just have sort of like the start line and they don't really, yeah, so it seems like a little bit ill-specified what, uh, what this range means exactly. Yeah, okay, so here we have a null root expression so this is a declaration of a, of a variable for some reason it doesn't have a root expression um, that's interesting is this a pointer to the thing itself is there like a recursive kind of looks like it is this the declaration again yeah i guess in this case we have an identity and a type and that's enough and we don't have any but it's kind of funny that it seems to refer to itself again, but it it doesn't have a root expression that is itself, which you would kind of expect in that case. Okay, well, this seems to be all the declarations. Let's see if there's a declaration. Like, what happens if we have an unused function? That's one of the things I'm curious about. So let's create a, an unused function. So we can have a function, function unused function. La is an int. Okay. So we compile this. We get this one. 
Uh, let's actually comment out the expressions again. I believe that now. So we can see it a bit more easily. Oh yeah, here it is. It does say that it's, it's a declaration. So we do get it. Um, what if we have a declar uh, a function that has that is uh, has a polymorph? Uh, how do we do that again? I think something like this. So that compiles, and we still get it. So that is good. What does it mean again if we do this? Oh, we have to put it in front. still sees that. Okay, that's good. But we don't really know if it sees all the expressions inside. I mean, we can easily test it, right? Like if we make like a typo here. Okay, we do, we do find that. Okay. So even with functions that, um, yeah, I guess we just don't generate code for it, but we still, uh, we still parse it. Okay. So I, I guess we will be able to do our, uh, our formatter. Cool. Well, let's look at this again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think the next step is going to be is um, we kind of want, need to decide what uh, what type of simple formatting rules we uh, we want to start with. Um, and I can imagine that something simple could be, yeah. I think what I said earlier, just making sure that like there's a semicolon. And there's no space between the semicolon and the thing that precedes it. That seems like just a very silly little little rule, but we could fairly easily implement that, I believe, by, um, by just kind of figuring out what the right um, what the right kind of node is to look at that, and then uh, and then to use that. Uh, but I think that this is a nice place to stop because we made a lot of progress and we can uh, we can figure figure out exactly how to do that next time. All right, signing off. Thanks a bunch. Have a good one.